Ah, another in Mendum video production. Probably. Anyway, anti bullshit man of. Yeah, I once understood him, um, but uh, no longer. He was <laughs> doing something else with his brain. I don't know what it is, but I don't get much of it. So, anyway, the. Just by the, the name of the title of the video says enough, right? Dual consequentialism is the rejoinder. All right. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it just doesn't, uh, just doesn't sing. Um, and then we'll do maybe Anticondavod's evil. Um, so anyway, this is just this ethics thing, whatever. A, d a description of the, what it is to be human. Um, you know, um... In this, it, look, in the simplest sense, we're just, uh, we have to learn how to be human, right? We have to learn how to think and feel in some sort of range of um, practicality, you know, pragmatically, um, to some extent. Um, but I think clearly, the thinking thing is the really cool part, you know. <laughs> you know, in, in in the sense of having the the admirable bits, you know, doing this logic thing and being able to understand something and fix it, kind of like fixing a car or fixing cooking dinner, um, a recipe, uh, do it your own little way. I mean, all that little bit, that's that kind of stuff, the stuff where we can learn uh, rules or. Uh, principles or, uh, you know, the function of something and be able to play the instrument correctly kind of thing. That's a really cool thing about being human. Then there's this feeling thing that you've kind of got to get the feelings on the same side as the thoughts for the thoughts to really have any power. So in a way you have to be in love with your thoughts, with certain principles, like loving the idea of being good, <laughs> you know, being productive. Those ideas, those words have to mean something to you in some sort of, I'm horny for that kind of way. I want to win. Uh, you know, and your brain has a definition of winning, which is, well, you can't win by cheating. <laughs> yeah, that's not winning. That's being a cheat. That's being a loser. Um, you know, these simple little things, right? This is kind of a s simple that you can see that in your psychology and, and you know, that we're all, we all kind of, um, you know, unfortunately, you have to have a passion for it. And often our passions are a little bit personal and that's where our bigotries get involved and, and um, you know, we, we cheat our perception, you know, put the blinders on when we really don't want to know about the fact that, you um, we had an advantage in some contest or some other kind. You know, we just don't want to really think about that. We want to think we, you know, we want to feel good about us. And, um, yeah, so we do some rationalizing and some cheating. But clearly the brain's capable of identifying that and seeing it and going, you're cheating. <laughs> you know, you're... You're just not accepting full responsibility, and you just don't want to do the work of, you know, what it takes to be do the right thing, and it's inconvenient to do the right thing, and so you bend the right thing to be more compatible with your feelings. So, but anyway, when you're having a conversation, though, about what the absolute principles are, um, so that's what I'll get to here. So, um, th this dual consequentialism just has to do with this dilemma in my opinion, uh, reducing it down to something, um, is that you really can't equate, you know, your comfort or pleasure um, and c turn into a currency of somebody else's pain or dissatisfaction or discomfort. And even in sort of silly extremes, um, you know, it's just not, you just don't have a right to even impose a stub toe or any burden on anybody to gain what you really don't need, which is a gratification of an addiction. You know, in the bottom line. So in the first place, our lives don't really have any meaning or value. Um, and all that really has value is our experiences. And we can't, in a sense, purchase those experiences through somebody else's pain. And so another way of saying that, 
so to speak, or getting to that dilemma that causes this need for any kind of dualism, is um, you know recognizing that um, comfort, our our pleasure, um, good, positive, a positive feeling, truly in and of itself positive, um, isn't the same, isn't the same kind of currency as negatives. Now we can personally have a judgment and say. You know, climbing the mountain was worth it or something. We can do something and somebody can fairly say, you be crazy. You know, they could fairly understand that, well, whatever your crazy addiction was, it was really out of all proportion. I mean, you know, the, the thrill of bungee jumping versus the preposterously stupid risk that you're going to do something damaging to your body just by the jolt alone, even if you don't hit the rocks, <laughs> you know, just the g-force problem is enough of a catastrophe to your brain function for what a few seconds of wonderment I mean it's just silly so anyone who has a <clears throat> that excessive value distortion dystopia to think there's some sort of um, winning in some kind of equation like that. But again, that's their personal discretion. You say, who cares? You want to torture yourself. All you can do is kind of sit on the sidelines and say, geez, they're crazy and sick. I wish I could give them a pill. <laughs> you know, but there's, you know, socially there's not much of a, not much we can do about what we perceive to be each other's imbecilities. Um, but in the bigger picture, I think it can be understood that you know, as soon as you're trespassing, as soon as you're grinding up the welfare of other feeling things to gain your gratification, well, then you've crossed a line, a line that's important. So if it was all about you, and it was just you, and there was no collateral damage, then you could say, okay, go ahead and speed, you stupid fuck. I mean, I don't get it. I mean, oh yeah, this little thrill of this little speed thing, and then, you know, the thrill of, you know, sitting there with a, whatever, broken neck, you know, living out your next two moments of life, um, wondering how big a fool you were or something. Or, you know, understanding that, oh, gee, that wasn't worth it. Quite obviously. Um, so anyway, but it does get to these whole subjects about what really has value, and I would say torture has value. Being dead, being alive, that kind of stuff doesn't have much value. It's how you live and how you die that matters. Um, quality, it's always about the quality. So I guess what I'm just saying is, is that it's really easy to do these value equations when you're measuring two things like, all right, if I have a broken leg, 10 people don't get broken legs. Now that's an obvious. Logically, you say, okay, there's just no way not to understand that, okay, give me the broken leg because it just... It, the, the math is too obvious and if there was such a thing as a real positive like winning the lottery or some kind of thing some kind of feeling so you could give somebody a, the feeling of a heroin high um, and it, it didn't cause any physical damage and <clears throat> you know as soon as it was over blah 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 uh, no 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 physical damage no social damage no no, no negative consequence. And so, yeah, you just say, we well, yes, give that to as many people as necessary to, you know, dig them out of their malaise or their depression or something else. Um, so you can really understand that it would always, you know, there's no, <laughs> you know, there's, there's no real, you don't even have to do the math. It's so simple, the math, in a sense. Um... The, the tricky part is in trade in trades in the positive realm. Like I said, but see, see the positive realm is just so non-existent in a sense because all of our positives are made of fixing something that you know a, a deficit that's in you, a, de a deprivation, an addiction, and so it's hard to come up with a real positive where if I took it away from you, you wouldn't feel a real negative. Like you know, if I if I made this scenario well, take away my lottery winnings and, and um, you give them to 10 other people and they're deliriously happy you know that kind of just redistribution well then you're still left with the person in kind of a miserable state because now they're 
you know, they're in a deprivated state. So there, it's not a, clearly it wasn't going from a good state to a more good state. It's clearly going from a good state to what is clearly a negative state, which complicates exchanges on the upside. It's hard to come up with good thought experiments for purely positive exchanges, uh, you know, trade-ups, where the trade-ups of replacing negatives, like I jump on the grenade and, <clears throat> you know, the 20 other guys don't get horribly injured, you know, those kind of economics are just kind of obvious. And it's just a matter of having the courage um, to, to, to bite the integrity bullet and do the right thing. But that's all it is. I mean, the logic is pretty simple. So, uh, yeah, so I don't, I, you know, his video was just so all over the place that I don't, you know, it's all this jargon, and I just have no interest in being pigeonholed into a whatever this ism category thingy. And not, not when it's so ill-defined. Um, so whatever, I'll, I'll link to his video. It's just, it says the, doesn't get any style points either. Just doesn't. <laughs> it just doesn't. It's just not fun. Anyway, on to Contavod. Ugh, hate for the devil. So this ought to be funny anyway. So let's play some of this and and see where it leads. Ah, browser is going to blow up. Cool. Uh, maybe. Maybe not. There's a place in Mecca where Mecca. pilgrims might... I mean, you've got to have heard this on the news a million times. No one calls it Mecca. I mean, that, look, you know, this, this Canadian thing goes only so far. You know, I mean, come on. Uh, what, you want me to just call you an idiot? What, you, ha you, you really are telling me you hear people pronounce it Mecca. I mean, really. Mecca. I've never heard it pronounced anything other than Mecca. I mean, it's one of those words where I don't think I've ever heard it ever pronounced, but anything but Mecca. Ever. In my entire existence, you're the first person to sit there and make a mess of the word. How could you possibly do that? You're an international character. <laughs> I mean, come on. You're telling me that you could walk up to a Muslim and say, Mecca. And they would appreciate you pronouncing it correctly. Muslim hajis, I guess they're called, uh, as part of their ritual of visiting Mecca for the Hajj. Ah, there. Now you uh, said it. See, you said it right that time. So I guess you're, it's, I guess it's just a. All right, whatever. You were just being Canadian for a little while. Box and throw them at a pillar that represent. Uh, there's several pillars, but represent several temptations or some people would interpret it as the devil himself that you're throwing rocks at the devil that's one of the more interesting from my perspective um religious rituals that are still pretty common. yeah whatever yeah you like all that kind of crap right swear at a goat kick a mule in the nuts i have nuts work anyway in the modern world and it says a lot about the nature of or at least our view of the nature of, I guess, good and evil. Um, I don't think it says anything about anything reasonable. I mean, there's nothing that comes at it. As soon as you say the word Mecca, okay, you fucked anything good. There's no, there's no good to come out of any of that rubbish. The nature of uh, our relationship to good and evil and essentially our ideas on to what extent our aversions should go. <clears throat> our inversion should go yeah the, to the extent our logic can do logic so I, I again it's just about being smart and honest so i mean it doesn't take much brains to figure out i tell you really truly i didn't have much brains as a kid but i could certainly feel find out when i start find out oh they all these little things have brains and all these little things have feelings Oh, feelings are quite precious i've had them they're they're a very precious thing these feeling things so yes you don't you don't even you don't even think about going around tripping beetles or something. No, nah, you, you don't you don't harass feeling things for fun. You know, for, you gotta have a good reason to, to to be causing any sensitive creature on this planet torment for, for without a good reason. I mean, it's just fucking 
This is shit a five-year-old can figure out, and you're talking like there's a dilemma? There's no dilemma here. We're, you're, you're just selfish cunts defending being selfish cunts, but you don't want to take any responsibility for the planet you're born into. This is the, the game here. You can't just make up your own game. This is the game. The game is horror. And it's imposed with little sticks you stick in people's pockets. And it's bullshit. In other words, is hate tenable? Um, or is hate... Look, hate is just the opposite of the love thing in the sense that passion versus, you know, positive passion versus a negative passion. So, yes, the things that you find admirable in yourself or in the world are beautiful or fine in terms of great efficiency. And you see, wow, wow, he, he negotiated with the heathen Mechaites and uh, prevented them from jihading and causing all kinds of pain and suffering. And so you give the guy a Nobel Prize because he did a great thing, right? So that sort of makes logical sense. And then you find somebody who's inciting hate and talking bigotry and you know, pretending that, you know, Whitey has horns and he's going to come here and cast spells on you, um, you know, or some other rubbish, you know, inciting uh, violence and, and futility, feudal violence, um, massacres, let's even say. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, you hate that. You, you hate the waste of this. This waste of, of creating a con... Look, we already have enough problems, so we don't need somebody... You know, stirring in some more uh, spicy bullshit. A desirable uh, quality for us to have. Because I would say that the act of stoning something, because it brings up ideas of stoning humans, is kind of an, an expression of anathematizing or um, punishing. Or... No, it's a will to justice. I mean, it's a will to try to fix it, to try to make it right. Man, you can't even get that one right. There's nothing else. I mean, it's, this whole idea of turning every time somebody does something to 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 attempt to smite uh, a waste and horror and suffering and bad in the world, that somehow it's uh, you know it, it's some sort of of revenge act. And certainly it can be. There's lots of people out there just trying to get their revenge. You know, they'll, they'll waste time, you know, having whatever, kangaroo court so they can, you know, pop somebody's head off. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, you know, silly. But most of the time, most of what the human race is after is something called most human beings on an individual, personal level are seeking control and justice and fairness. And this is the only mechanism they have. They can't prevent it. They can't drill holes in people's brains and put sticks in there and fix their brokenness. So all they have is a weapon against it is some sort of punitive uh, deterrence. Because they have nothing else. But I'm telling you, if they had some other choice, if they had something else to vote for, as much as I think human beings suck, I think they would vote for a better way deliberately harming someone and spectacularly harming them um, as opposed to um, just getting them out of the way I would assume that if you wanted to just delete somebody you would lop their head off yeah well they do that too so again when, when you bring up Mecca and then you talk about I think they would just lop their they do plenty of that just lop their head off shit you know, and sometimes they make a spectacle of it. Because if you make a spectacle, you know, fill the arena full of people, and before the football game, yeah, hack off a couple of sluts' heads, and that'll teach the sluts not to be sluts. Now, look, you know, the idea isn't flawed. The, the foundational understanding is insipid and silly. The crime is putridly insignificant. Um... But the mythology of, of, of the, 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 the thoughtology of recognizing that there's such a thing in the world as deterrence, wow, there's nothing illogical about recognizing that. I mean, look, I mean, frankly, I have been deterred from doing things my entire life by the prospect of punishment. And if I could do as I will, 
as I would truly desire to see the world have done to it, <laughs> it'd be a really different place. Trust me. Which is another thing that apparently takes place frequently in Saudi Arabia. Uh, rather than right, right. So it undoes your whole point. <clears throat> and stoning them. So stoning somebody means that you, you know, stoning something means that you want to, it's at a distance from you and you have to throw rocks at it. You don't even want to go near enough to touch it. That kind of thing is cool. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Read a whole bunch of crap into this thing that has nothing to do with it. But I, yeah, I'm sure part of that came about because of lepers and everything like that. And, you know, unfortunately... You, you know, I mean, clearly there was a point where, yeah, you, you know, I'm sure people felt bad, but they also said, I don't want fucking leprosy. I know you're hungry. I know you want to live in town with the rest of us, all that kind of shit. But you fucking got leprosy. I'm sorry. You, you try to come back into town. I'm going to throw a fucking rock at you, you motherfucker. Because I don't want to get fucking leprosy, you stupid kook. Now that isn't, you know, I know it, it sounds horrible. But it's just being practical. I mean, it just is. You got to stone the infected ones. With symbolism. That's why I think the, the ritual of, is often seen as stoning of the devil, even though it's not necessarily the case that that's technically what's happening. I have no doubt that the vast majority of Muslim hajis actually see it this way. The devil's over there, and I'm now throwing rocks at the devil. Really doesn't make a difference, does it? I mean, I think they really know that what they're doing is sending a message. And they're saying it kind of loud and clear. This is what you're going to get if you violate these little codes that we got. Um, an interesting view of things. Uh, hate. Uh... Well, sure, it's always interesting to pervert things and twist them and, you know, turn turn them into funny mirrors at the carnival. But that's all. You're just taking reality and warping it into some shape it has, that has nothing to do with it. And then saying, well, isn't it interesting that? No. It's a cartoon. It's a silly entertainment, but it's not interesting to somebody who wants to really understand what's happening on Earth. This storytelling is not very useful requires an other uh, it's a subject object relationship um, I... uh, yeah whatever the brain on brain yeah that's what it is it's a competition uh, you know there's right and there's wrong ways to do things and whether you call us instructional manuals or it doesn't we're in a competition for who's who's got the right manual who's doing it right who's got the better sequence of the ordered events who's who plays the piano better <clears throat> I mean the argument is is what is the more correct or the correct approach to managing um, the value at stake and I have hate and I hate something else one can hate oneself of course one can hate many different things but in this particular perspective in terms of hating something exterior to oneself it assumes that there is this other out there yeah whatever i mean quite obviously you're an other compared to me okay i mean we're others we're not anything alike in terms of our fundamental understanding of reality there's no reason to say we're the same so other seems perfectly suitable terminology to describe and I'm arguing that the world should be run by this other, not your other, however you want to put it. That you're a menace, and I'm not. Well, obviously. Let me jump ahead, see if this gets at all interesting. Um, it does seem to look that way. Um, but, you know, it, I don't think that that actually stands up to scrutiny. I don't think that that stands up to... Well, let me go back. Being who the bad guy is always boils down to this, this one person getting rigidly framed by the camera. Ah, uh, we caught you, you bad person. That's how the herd, I guess you would call it, is has its morals. Right, uh, right, 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 right. So the guy just, you know, <clears throat> uh, you could just go back to a Clint Eastwood movie, right? I mean, it doesn't matter. You could just find, yeah, so a guy... Uh, you know, rapes the fiancé and, 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 well, rapes the woman and then kills the to-be husband. And, um, 
and uh, leaves town, and then the posse goes after him, and they catch him, and they hang him. This guy would say, oh, that's just some sort of hate bigotry, or that's just some sort of, well, who's the real bad guy? Come on. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, he really thinks that most of the people in jail probably don't belong there. <laughs> yeah, he probably does. The kook. Um, nasty way to refer to the overwhelmingly mass of human society, isn't it? Especially for somebody who says that hate and otherizing people isn't good, but um, it does seem to look that way. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, well, whatever. I, I just, I mean, okay, maybe somebody will buy this crap. I mean, obviously you get the, the, the ten likes for this kind of shit. You know, defending criminal mentalities, de de defending the selfish and the takers and the rapists and the pillagers. But frankly, I don't think it's gonna. If I, you know, if I, if I, if I presented these two, these two philosophies, one that says, should the bad people, okay, be used to prevent crime, you know, in the sense that you punish them to prevent crime in the future, to create deterrence. Or should we just let them all get away with it? I think they'll understand the right answer. Um, but, you know, it, I don't think that that actually stands up to scrutiny. I don't think that that stands up to withering scrutiny. Do we know enough about anyone to hate them? I don't think so. <clears throat> oh, fuck you. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I know enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I do. As soon as they got a prayer tower, I know enough. As soon as they got a cathedral, you know, sucking the money out of the poor, yeah, I know enough. Unbelievable. Let's jump ahead a little. The view that most of us aren't even aware of our own motivations for doing 99% of the things that we do. Okay, so there's another. He's just insulted all of your their intelligence, and the people just upright that. Oh, yeah, I never think about what I'm doing, and I have no clue what I'm doing, and I just act impulsively, and I'm, you know, just pretty much completely retarded. Well, his audience is that. Do them. Um, but hate, though, I think does imply a moral judgment. It has to, it has to be, it, you know, there has to be some sort of... I mean, a moral judgment, see, again, he turned it into morality. So anytime you have any logical objection to behavior, somebody just poured dioxin, you know, for 50 bucks, they just poured dioxin into Lake Michigan. Oh, it's irrational to hate of idea that that this grave injustice has been done which implies a moral ideal justice. Uh, yes a moral ideal which is ethical decency i mean you have to obey a few civil rules you cannot uh you know gather up children and then molest them and then you know flush them down the toilet i mean you know there's rules idiot this is an ideal isn't it um, and it also implies the idea that there are that that if you engage in this kind of activity, it actually says something about you fundamentally. Right. It's well. What is that? Is this hard either? So Ted Bundy tortures women for hours and then kills them. You know, rapes, kills them. This doesn't say something fundamental about his psychology, his the function of his brain that he finds this totally defendable. I will torture them for my gratification. And that makes perfectly good sense. And this isn't and, and somehow we're not rationally supposed to say that's one broken motherfucker. That clock ain't working. And somebody needs to pull the plug because it's gonna blow up the powerhouse or whatever. It's just a threat to all of us. Uh, at some fundamental level you are an error or at an existential level, even. You know what I mean? <clears throat> right. So again, there's no possibility that there's any wrong perspectives or outrageous conduct or silly ways of uh, rationalizing selfishness and all kinds. That can't possibly happen. There's no such thing as a truth. There's no such thing as a reality. Uh, you get to just make it up. If you want to think, uh, you know, nine-year-old kids are oranges or apples and that you're allowed to eat them whenever you want to <clears throat> fine yes it's all subject if you're allowed to have your interpretation there's nothing called rationality or reason or logic 
are a gigantic collection of facts. We'll just pretend it's a comic book. And you can just make anything do anything because there's no rules, no gravity, no anything. Fuck you. To be hated, or in order for you to hate somebody, you have to say that there's something about that person. It might not be irreversible in them, but it's so deep and it's so malignant that any rational person would hate that person. Well, that would be nice if it worked that way, but obviously people don't uh, rationally hate. They often irrationally hate. They scapegoat. They do a lot of stupid things, but I'm just saying that clearly if you apply intelligence and reason and logic and have some sort of and have your your values tested in some sort of rational conversation where you have to defend something like, what's in it for me? Uh, you know, uh, I didn't feel a thing. What's the big deal? So I torture something. What's the big deal? Yeah, have those brilliant philosophical axioms tested. And I think you'll, it'll be found to fail the test. It's laughable. Chimpanzees can laugh at it. It's that silly. Even a chimpanzee knows better. I mean, fuck. I mean, squirrels know better. Good people or evil people. I don't think that we do. Um, if we do have the capacity to decide or to determine who merits hatred, Hitler did do the right thing. He just put the... Oh, whatever. Yeah, Hitler did do the right thing. He just... Let's hear the rest of this wrong people in there, didn't he? Oh, yeah, exactly. I, I want you're going to make some argument that he didn't. There's no such thing as bad people. There's no such thing as completely destructive, um, uh, wasteful human beings in the sense that they cause real harm to real people. They degrade real value. They ruin resources. They cause forest fires, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, real pain and suffering, and we should just pretend that doesn't happen, and that that isn't a real problem, <sighs> or that somehow we're supposed to rationally re respond to that with something other than, well, let's do what we can to prevent that shit from ever happening again. Let's deter that behavior. So just lose all the lose the all the value of that in this inane conversation about how it's hard to figure out what's right and wrong because you can't figure out what torture is, you fucking cunt, and that you don't have a right to impose it on something else for your gratification. You can't figure out those two simple things. Oh, of course you can figure them out, and you don't like the rule. You don't like that being the facts, because that doesn't make it any fun for the selfish cunts. And the cunt of that. You're such an insult to the Indian philosophy you attempt to wear on your sleeve. <sighs> Ugh. Ugh. Sorry. Enough said, I believe. So there, another Mendham video. So I can still do them. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Physics video next, though. Got a whole oh, just, uh, technicalities are always just such a bitch, <laughs> you know, writing technicalities. Ugh. But anyway, until the next time and such and so forth and whatnot.